Hello traders and welcome to the weekend update here for SJG Trade. So it is January 15th, Monday. It is uh, a banking holiday, so our markets are closed here today. Uh, but I did want to kind of run through the update uh, of positions and then take a look at kind of a market overview. So the first thing I want to note is that uh, these are our current open positions that you see here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The wheel strategy on Google is doing well. It's up about $1,500. Now, I'm probably just going to let this one expire this coming weekend. Uh, we've got 100 shares of long stock and a short call out on this. This thing's going to decay about another $250 or so. And at that point, I'll probably just let Google get called away. This thing has been open now for 178 days. We've been through a couple of cycles in a wheel strategy so that people have been able to see how the whole uh, wheel process is done. And of course, you can go to the circle down below uh, in the alert service and play all the videos associated with this. So you can see that entire process uh, from start to finish in real time as the trades were made. So I think that that educational process, if you will, um, on this trade should largely be intact and complete for anyone looking at that. Uh, this particular trade here, Broken Wing Butterfly, where we have rolled up the wing on the right side as the market has advanced forward. I do want to look at closing this. I, we can't really squeeze much more out of this trade. I can't really roll the wings any further because we're far enough from the money right now um, that there just isn't activity there. There's just not traders there. I, the bid-ass spread gets too wide. Um, and trying to roll this up, you just don't gain enough value this close to expiration. You might pick up five, six bucks, uh, maybe a couple bucks after uh, commissions. And at that point, it's like, why is it worth leaving um, over $2,500 in risk open to pick up an extra three to four bucks? It's just not for me. Uh, plus, as you know, I want to get into the habit of closing all of the trades much closer to expiration um, so that we don't end up in a situation like I did here in Q4 where some of the positions were simply carried. Uh, you know, it's not carrying them close to expiration that was the problem. It was carrying them close to expiration in a market that was literally ripping up. Those two combined are a bad thing. You know, if the market were to rip up here on this trade, no impact whatsoever. But because there were trades on that had um, uh, upside risk associated with them, you put that in with a massive up uh, move and you're close to expiration and, and your hands are kind of tied. There's just no place to go there. So again, I'm going to be uh, wanting to avoid that here in 2023 uh, in exchange for closing those earlier, not having as much gamma. The overall returns will likely be lower um, because again, we're looking at getting out of trades when we have 6 10% profit here in lower volatility. Um, if we get some pullbacks and volatility increases, what we're looking for profit-wise will increase as well. Um, but uh, anyhow, so the goal is going to be to close this one out early here um, in the week, possibly Tuesday or Wednesday. I may have to take this out. There's an order out there on this right now, a GTC order to close uh, this particular trade for, let's see, I forget what I've got that out there at, um, uh, 20 cents. So I may very well have to go and close this out in two separate trades. Um, again, because the, the bid ask spread or the overall activity on this entire trade, there's just not enough uh, action where these strikes are um, to get all four legs of this thing closed out. There's just not enough people interested in it at this point. Um, so then this particular trade here, uh, this doesn't expire until February 16th, a month away, but I wanna, I, we have had one roll on this where we've raised this wing. I'm gonna look to probably raise this wing again here this week. 
um, may very well also look to raise this one. I believe this one was raised last week as well, at least on one of the strikes. So <clears throat> it got it to about a break-even point, or actually not quite a break-even, but it reduced that upside risk. So I want to do that a little more. Uh, again, continue to roll this wing up. In some cases, in order to keep our downside risk in check, I may also need to roll up downside wings in some cases. So um, we'll take a look at that uh, based on market conditions. This trade was literally just opened. Now, I have a slight amount of more upside risk on this one. You can see there's about $550 in upside risk. So why was I okay uh, with this one uh, having that little more risk associated with it. The other thing we'll look at on this trade is this trade is an iron butterfly. I should probably actually come in and um, uh, denote that here uh, because I did get a few questions on that, which is great. I love that people are asking questions, but the question I got is why is this an iron butterfly where I'm using a combination of calls and puts as opposed to just all puts, which is kind of my standard go-to butterfly. Now, the reason for this is that in this case, it really does not make a difference. Um, and you know, the reason it doesn't make a difference is that volatility is pretty darn low right now. Our overall market uh, volatility um, is lower than it's been in quite some time. So when volatility is low and put options are not elevated in price, it really doesn't make a great deal of difference whether we're selling, you know, one or two of, or excuse me, whether we're selling two or four. In this case, this is a two lot butterfly. So, um, and we, we sold two of them. So whether we're selling two calls and two puts here, or four puts here doesn't make a very big difference, uh, probably no difference at all when volatility is quite low. And more people tend to be a little more comfortable with and familiar with this structure because it's the same structure as an iron condor which is what a lot of people start learning on. The only difference is, is that the short strikes happen to be at the same point. So I did this as an iron butterfly as opposed to an all put butterfly because it really doesn't make a difference in this case. So where it does make a difference, if our volatility were significantly higher, if we had a market drop and volatility went from you know, 15 up to 25, 30, 40 up in that area, that's when the puts all become much, much more expensive. Now, calls will oftentimes elevate in price as well, but um, I find usually not as much because if our market is tanking, people are buying puts. People are driving up the prices on those puts. When they're driving up the prices on those puts, when volatility is higher, that's when I want to be a seller. So when volatility goes up, it's often better to turn these into all put butterflies. Um, so that's the reason. I'm glad people asked that. I love that uh, um, the people were on the ball and wondering why. Um, always ask those questions. That's great. That's what this uh, you know whole community is about and what it's for. So let me get back to the graphs page here at the overall. Um, uh, look at those positions and then we'll kick forward and take a look at our overall market. And and I don't know why when this thing refreshes, it's showing uh, the negative $12,000. Obviously that position is not down $12,000 as we have already determined. It's up about 1500. I think what it's doing here is it doesn't have, uh, it's searching for the pricing of the underlying stock right now is what's happening. But anyhow, we know that that one is up as well. So these are the current open positions. Now let's go take a look at the market itself. So I'm going to get uh, my face out of here. Um, I've gone back three years here. So three years in one day bars. Now the reason I went back three years is I want people to see that previously our all time high, um, you know, prior to uh, COVID here was back on January 5th. Uh, let's see, actually that was not, um, uh, was that pre, no, that was not pre COVID, but January 25th, um, yeah, let's see here on 
one four twenty two. So January of twenty two is about when our prior all time high was. Um, then of course we had pretty big you know sell off retracement. Let me put this into weekly real quickly here. We'll just look at. Uh, um, yeah, let's see, I need to go back more than three years. Uh, don't need to go back 20, though, but yeah, it looks like that's my option here. Um, then I can enlarge this. So this will give us a little bit, kind of a, a better look at our, our weekly market. So big sell-off here. Um, uh, this was the whole COVID thing, then the rally out of COVID, then pull back. Now we're right back to all-time highs. Again, here we're looking at monthly bars. Uh, so I'm going to take this back down now to the three-year daily bars. And we can see that we're approaching that exact same market point, if you will. We're getting right back up to that prior all-time high. Now, are we going to bust through that? Well, that's the million dollar question. Uh, I do believe that we will because here recently we've been in a very firm and uh, protracted uptrend, had a little bit of a pullback here as I predicted a week or two ago in the weekend update. I said, we're probably going to get some pullback. It's probably going to be around to 4,700. It may even come down all the way here to about 4,600. Uh, then I was expecting a move back up and probably a punch through these highs. I'm still probably expecting the same thing. I don't know that we're going to get blow right through here, but this is a measure of our volatilities. They're very low at this point, which means there's not a lot of fear in the market. I find that personally a little bit surprising, again, given you know the couple of wars that are raging out there, given our political climate, given that we're looking at another potential government shutdown if our if our government can't um, you know iron that whole thing out. So there's a lot of things here that are um, uh, to me um, looking like we should be pulling back a little bit. But again, we haven't so far. So what I'm setting up for in my trades is I'm setting up for a chop between the 4,800, maybe down to you know the 4,600 range. Um, that's kind of my expectation for the you know next couple of months. If we do pop out here, if we do pop out, that's going to be an all-time high that is going to fuel money into the market. Now, we may get what's called a fake out where we pop through for maybe a day or two and then big money comes in and starts selling and pushes us back down. So just because we pop through, if we pop through a day, to me, that's not necessarily an off to the races sort of flag. Um, but if we pop through and remain through a day or two, then I think, you know, we're kind of going to be off to the races again. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm not just looking for a pop through of the 4,800. I'm looking for a pop through and then it kind of holding there for a day or two. If that takes place, uh, then I, I think we're going to see another up leg uh, come off here pretty quickly. And I think we'll probably see that up leg is going to be another 50 point, maybe 70 point uh, or so up leg. That's just kind of how these waves have been running here at this point. So coming back to our positions, that's the reason that at this point, none of these positions have added upside risk. I really wanted to put on a call spread on this one because I don't think we're going above 4,800 by the time this expires at the end of this next week or two weeks from now. But again, I also don't want to be carrying these closer to expiration. So for that reason, I'm just taking this thing off. But if I were to want to carry something closer to expiration, I would probably sell a single call spread here, not putting on too much upside risk, uh, selling that single call spread in the 48, you know, maybe the 4850 range or so. So it's a little ways away from the market. 
And in doing that, I could probably pick up an extra $200 on this trade in potential decay, so long as this trade were to behave and, and the market stay within that window. Um, but again, my goal right now is not to have those sorts of things in play, not to add upside risk, because if we do pop through, we're going to pop through aggressively and fast. And I don't want to be chasing my tail on this, trying to adjust it. Um, and again, I don't want to be carrying that close to expiration. Now, that doesn't mean that I might not add some sort of small call spread on one of these at some point that is further out in expiration. Um, but we'll, we'll see how the market behaves as it gets back into and around that 4,800 point. So that is it for now. Uh, as always, if anyone has any questions, uh, please uh, make a comment down below. I'll be happy to take a look.